because it is your works, the things that you do that will determine your punishment. Same also for us as believers. If your name is in the book of life, the things you do will determine your reward in heaven. Whether you receive reasonable reward or you don't have any reward because the Bible says that our works will be tested and it is what remains that will determine your reward. Ephesians chapter 1 Ephesians chapter 1 I'm reading verses 3 to 14 Ephesians chapter 1 verses 3 to 14 Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he has made us accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he proposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. In him you also trusted after you've heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Now, this scripture passage tells us about God's blessings to us, which we have in Christ Jesus. In verse 13, he said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us, in verse 3 rather, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. God has blessed you and I, if you put your faith in Jesus Christ as Savior, with so many blessings, but those blessings are in Christ Jesus. So for you to enjoy those blessings, you have to be in Christ Jesus. And to be in Christ Jesus means that you are united with him, just like a tree. John chapter 15, it says, The God the Father is a vine, we are the branches. And so if we are the branch and the Father is the vine, then whether it's fruit, whatever that is flowing through the branches, we will be part of it. Amen. So God has blessed us with spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And in this passage, I counted about eight of them, eight blessings. And it's the blessings we have in Christ Jesus. In verse 4, it says, God chose us. In verse 5, he adopted us as his children. In verse 6, God accepted us. In verse 7, we are redeemed. In verse 9, it has pleased God to bring us into the mystery of his will. In verse 11, we have an inheritance in Christ Jesus. And in verse 13, God has sealed us with the Holy Spirit. So if you have the Holy Spirit in you, 
that is a guarantee, is a mark in you that not only that you belong to God, but all that God has promised, they will all come to pass. Hallelujah. So it's a seal, it's a mark that you belong to God. And that mark also shows that everything that belongs to God is yours. All that he has promised you and I, we will enjoy. Hallelujah. So we find that in Christ Jesus, there are so many blessings, so many things that God has provided for us. And so today I've titled what I want to share with us, who you are in Christ. So who are you in Christ? In Christ Jesus, the Bible tells us that you are saved. We are saved. In Christ Jesus, we are born again. Hallelujah. You are reconciled to God. You are redeemed. You have direct access to God. You are crucified with Jesus Christ. You are a citizen of heaven. You are more than a conqueror. There are so many other things that are ours, blessings, spiritual blessings that are ours because we are in Christ Jesus. And all these things are who we are. That's the way God sees us. So when God looks at you, he says, that's my child. You're a child of God. That's the way God sees you. And he wants you to see yourself that way. I'm a child of God. I'm a citizen of heaven. Even though we live here on earth, we are citizens of heaven. We have dual citizenship. But the citizenship of heaven takes supremacy. It takes priority. And that's why we have to live as people who are citizens of heaven and will exercise authority of heaven while we live here on earth. Hallelujah. So when you walk about today, know that not only are you a child of God, but you're a citizen of heaven. Praise the Lord. And I hear some people say that I operate with the economy of heaven, not the economy here on earth. Amen. So whatever is happening here on earth, remember, that's why we pray, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Because as citizens of heaven, we want to ensure that God's rule, God's mandate is what happens here on earth. And if we allow ourselves to be influenced by everything that happens here on earth, then we are not operating as children of God, as citizens of heaven. Because that's who you are. You're a new creation. Um, where's that song? I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. All things are passed away. I'm born again. More than a conqueror. That's who I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. I'm a brand new man. I'm a new a song you should sing every day and remind yourself who you are in Christ. Because that song alone captures so many of the things that I'm talking about today. I'm a new creation. Now when that song and the Bible says that you're a new creation, what it's saying is that you are a completely brand new person. When you put your faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're not the same person. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 76 says, You are a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Hallelujah. You know, I had somebody that said sometime that they are, he says, the part of me that is not born again. No, there is no part of you that is not born again. Because this scripture says you are a brand new person, new creation, something that never existed before. Now you are brand new. And that's the way you should see yourself. Since all things are passed away, behold, all things have become new. 
That's who we are. New creation. So you have new desires. You have new pleasures. You have new master. Satan is no longer your master. The Bible says that when we are born again, God translates us. He takes us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the son. King James Version says it's a translation. You are transferred. You are removed. You are delivered from the influence and the authority of Satan. And then you are put in the kingdom of God. And Jesus Christ is your master. No longer the devil. I love that scripture. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. It's one scripture I love. And sometimes when I first challenge it, I, I say, devil, you are not my master. You can't dictate what happens in my life. Jesus Christ is my master. In fact, remember that the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the head of the church. And we are members of the body of Christ. So Satan has no control. He should have no influence over your life. Because you're a brand new person. And that's the song said, we are more than conquerors. If you read that scripture in Romans chapter 8, it talks about so many challenges that people go through. Romans chapter 8. Let's look at the various challenges that you go through. But he says, in all of these things, we are what? We are more than conquerors. That's who you are. No matter whatever you go through, know that you're already victorious. And he says, more than conqueror. That is to say, you overcome that situation and you are on top of it. It's not just that you defeat it and then it will come at you again. Even if it comes, you're on top of it. You're in control of it. That's what a, more than a conqueror is. And that's who we are in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. All things are passed away. I'm born again. More than a conqueror. Romans chapter 8. Let's see what the scripture says so that um, I'm not just telling you fables. All right. Let's start from verse 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? It is Christ who had died, and furthermore is risen. Who is it? Who, who is at, even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Now, here he goes. Let me read it in um, the easy-to-read version. So that um, it's simpler. All right. It says, can trouble, no, or problems, or persecution separate us from his love? If we have no food, clothes, we face danger, or even death, will that separate us from his love? As far as the scriptures say, for you, we are in danger of death all the time. People think we are worth no more than sheep to be killed. But in all these troubles, we have complete victory through God who has shown his love for us. Amen. Yes, I am sure that nothing can separate us from God's love. Not death, life, angels, ruling spirits. I am sure that nothing now Nothing in the future, no powers, nothing above us, nothing below us, nothing in the whole created world will ever be able to separate us from the love of Christ, love of God, uh, love, f separate us from the love God has shown us in Christ Jesus our Lord. So nothing, nothing whatsoever. We are more than conquerors. Trouble, problems, lack, nothing, nothing. We, are, we overcome those things. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So you're a brand new person. You're a child of God. There are only two families on this earth. Only two families. You either belong to the family of God or you belong to the family of the devil. When Jesus Christ was talking to the Jews, he told them that 
what you do, you have your father the devil. And it is what he does that you do. He's a liar. He's a murderer. And so are you. Because they wanted to kill Jesus Christ. So there are just only two families. And the way we become children of God, and we belong to God's family, is by putting our faith in Jesus Christ. John chapter 1 verse 12. So as many as believe him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God. Nobody in this earth is a child of God in the sense that God is your father, except you put your faith in Jesus Christ as your savior. All of us, we are rebels, we are sinners. And because of that, the devil is our father. <laughs> I've had some people say that when you are going to when you want to marry and you, you, you want to marry a non-believer, they'll tell you that your father-in-law is the devil. I, I wouldn't go as far as that. But the, the, if you look at the scripture, that's really what it's saying. That um, if you are not a child of God, your father is the devil. That's, that's, that's scripture. But if you're a child of God, if you are born again, John chapter 1 verse 12, it says, it's when you believe in Jesus Christ, then you have the right to become a child of God. And when you're a child of God, God is your father. Praise the Lord. Yes. It's when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you become a child of God. But until then, you're a child of the devil, unfortunately. Now, um, Pastor Demola reminds us a lot of time who God the Father is. And what he does is to help us to talk about or look at our own parents, our own fathers. I know parents who, are, okay, let me put it this way. As, as you have, has your children at any time come to you to say, Daddy or Mommy, please remember to pay my school fees? Does that happen? Even before they come, you already planned. You've made plans. You know it's your responsibility. And so you provide for them. And that's what God does for us. Because we are his children, he provides for us. He does. He cares for us. He has our best interests in his heart. He thinks about us. That's what it means for us to be a child of God. It means that God is your father. He cares for you. But you know, if, if you remember um, um, which passage in scripture is that now? Um, where, where God tells us not to worry. Matthew chapter 6. Because God is our father and he says over and over there that God cares for us. But we worry about so many things because we have not learned to trust him as our father. So remember you're a child of God. And as a child of God, God is your father. He cares for you. Another thing is that a father would ensure that he protects his children. There is no parent that will expose his or her child to danger or to hurt. We don't do that. So also God, our father, he protects us. I, I love Job chapter 1. I think it's verse 10 where Satan was complaining to God the Father and was telling him, see, I can't touch you because you've built a hedge, a protection. He said, you built a hedge around him, around his family, and around everything that he has. It was only after God gave Satan the permission, that was when Satan was able to touch you. Without that permission, he wasn't able to do anything. He was complaining, he said, you protected him. And that's what God does for you and I. He loves us. He cares for us. He provides for us. And then he protects us because we are his children. You can imagine the whole armies of heaven deployed to protect you. There's another scripture that said, God builds a wall of fire around us as protection. Praise the Lord. We do, we, sometimes we are not aware. We are so afraid. If you know you're a child of God, know that you are protected. You can, I, I am not saying that you, you can just put yourself uh, um, uh, to, to get 
killed or you know put yourself uh, in a situation that uh, uh, you 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 expose yourself but the thing is this god protects us but we shouldn't be careless because god protects us but be aware that god cares for you and god protects you hmm all right let me round up with this i'm a new creation i'm a brand new man all things happen i'm i'm born again To be born again means that you are born from above. It means that you are born anew. It's a spiritual birth. Remember, Nicodemus said, will I enter into my mother's womb so that I'll be born again? Jesus said, of course, no. And he explained to him that it's to be born by the Spirit. When you are born again, what happens? You receive the life of God. You have some people talk about Zoe life. You receive the life of God. When you are born again, you have the nature of God in you. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 24, it says that God has created or the new man. He said, put on the new man that is created after God. And he said, that creation after God is what? Is in holiness and righteousness. So when you are born again, you are like God. You have the nature of God. You have the life of God. You have the righteousness, righteousness of God. You have the holiness of God because you're a child of God. That's what it means to be born again. You're new. Before you were dead, now you are alive. But the life you have is the life of God. And that's why we can live, continue to live after life on earth here is over. And that life is a relationship you continue with the Lord Jesus Christ and with the God the Father when life on earth here is over. That's what it means to be born again. You have a new nature. You have the life of God. Okay? You have relationship with God the Father. Hallelujah. Then, like I said, the final one is that you are saved. What does it mean to be saved? You are saved from death. Romans chapter 6 verse 23. The wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Death, the Bible refers to there, a spiritual death and eternal death. What happens in salvation is that God saves us from eternal death. Eternal death is death in the lake of fire. If you've not put your faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior, and you die physically here on earth, you will die a second time. And that death is to be cast into the lake of fire. Revelation chapter what? I think it's chapter 20, verse 15. He says, um, those whose names were not written in the Lamb's book of life, they were thrown into the lake of fire. And for you to have your name in the Lamb's book of life, the Lamb is Jesus Christ. And he says, life. Lamb's book of life is a book of life. If you have not received Jesus Christ, you are spiritually dead. And so if you arrive at the throne of God, spiritually dead, then you'll be thrown into the lake of fire because your name will not be in the Lamb's book of life. He that has the Son has life, 1 John chapter 5. He that, has not, that, that does not have the Son does not have life. So for your name to be in the Lamb book of life, you need to put your faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior. But if you don't, and you pass from this life, you stand before God, the books will be open. You know, some people think that it's all the things that you have done. The first book that will be open is the book of life. And then they will check, is your name there? If your name is there, you are with God. But if your name is not there, you end up in the lake of fire. The Bible said that is the second death. So if you're here, you've not received Jesus Christ. You've not trusted him as your savior. That's what you need to do. Now, the, that passage also says, and other books were opened and people were judged by the things written in that, in those books. Now, those are the books of the things you have done. And those books will determine if you're in the lake of fire, whether you'll be in the hottest past or the, the hotter bath. 
because it is your works, the things that you do that will determine your punishment. Same also for us as believers. If your name is in the book of life, the things you do will determine your reward in heaven. Whether you receive reasonable reward or you don't have any reward because the Bible says that our works will be tested and it is what remains that will determine your reward. The crucial thing is that your name must be in the book of life. So when God saves us, he saves us from eternal death. And that only happens when you put your faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior. So if you are here, all the things we've said, these spiritual blessings in heavenly places, these blessings that are ours in Christ Jesus, they won't be yours except your name is written in the book of life. And that's if you put your trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior. And you can do so right now. All of us, we are born sinners. We are sinners because we are in Adam. And the only way to move from Adam to the Lord Jesus Christ is to put your faith in him. So it's not whether you are a moral person, you are a good person. No. What have you done but the Son of God that God has given to die in our place? That's the critical thing. That's the crucial thing. You're a child of God. You're a new creation. You're born again. You're saved. You're ransomed. You're delivered. You're more than conqueror. If your faith is in Jesus Christ as your seed. But if not put your faith in Jesus Christ, all that we've said here today, so no consequence. We are looking for Jesus Christ to come. I've had some people say that when death comes, Jesus has come for you. And nobody knows when that would happen. I don't know. You don't know. So that's why it's important for you to put your trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior. Shall we bow our heads in prayer?